Our next session is around manufacturer and retailer goals. And Byron Rapp is going to uh, moderate that session. Byron is the Chief Impact Officer at the Soil Health Institute. Byron's uh, duties include working with the Soil Health Institute's uh, part supporting partners and stakeholders to help them achieve their goals through soil. And earlier when I introduced David, I said that I'd learned the most from him. I think I've learned the most from David about just practical management and how to approach soil health. And I think I've learned the most from Byron about how to speak to people that aren't scientists. So uh, we'll take it, take it away, Byron. All right. Well, thank you so much, Christine. And thank you to all those growers and to David who took the time to join us this morning and share their experiences in adopting these regenerative soil health systems. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to this session on manufacturer and retail goals. My name is Byron Rath, as Christine said, and I'm very excited to moderate today's panel. Um, today, we're going to hear from three sustainability pros um, about their goals and strategies for sourcing sustainable raw materials like cotton from growers like the ones we heard from today, and how that informed their decision to join the U.S. Regenerative Cotton Fund, which is a five-year initiative that's farmer-facing and science-based and is designed to really empower farmers and their advisors and answering those questions that growers like Adam Chapel have um, and provide them with the resources, the information, and the networks they need to successfully adopt these regenerative soil health systems. And so with that, it's my pleasure to introduce today's panelists. Um, first up is Sammy Farback. She's a sustainability lead for Nature at Ralph Lauren. And in this role, Sammy's driving the company's strategies, partnerships, and projects in the areas of regenerative agriculture, biodiversity, water stewardship, and nature-based climate solutions. Before joining Ralph Lauren, she was the Global Director for Water and Sustainable Sustainability Operations at Anheuser-Busch InBev. Next is Jeannie Renee Malone. She leads global sustainability at VF Corporation overseeing all aspects of VF's sustainability strategy across its brands, operations, supply chain, materials, and products. Jeannie has extensive experience in development and implementation of sustainability goals and strategies, stakeholder engagement, and tracking and reporting of environmental social governance results. And last, Jeff Hogue is the Chief Sustainability Officer at Levi Strauss & Co., where he leads the sustainability and circular economy efforts for the organization to create positive impacts across environmental and social aspects of their global operations. Prior to joining Levi Strauss & Co., he held several CSO and leadership roles in a variety of industries, including biotechnology, food and agriculture, retail food, and fashion. And so Sammy, if we can begin with you, if you can tell us a bit about Ralph Lauren's sustainability goals and strategies when it comes to sourcing cotton grown and soil health systems, and why Ralph Lauren saw a need for an initiative like the U.S. Regenerative Cotton Fund. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the introduction, Byron, um, and thanks for the opportunity to be here. I'm just so grateful to be able to be a part of SHI's annual meeting this year and to be able to talk about the great work of the uh, USRCF. Um, the USRCF is something that's really closely aligned with the sustainability strategy and overall values of Ralph Lauren and the Ralph Lauren Corporate Foundation. For more than 50 years, our, our company has sought to inspire the dream of a, a better life through authenticity and timeless style. We've really stood for values and things that last and are enduring. Um, Ralph Lauren is also an icon of American style, so we're a company rooted in the U.S. with a strong connectivity to this country and, and the land. Um, and our Ralph Lauren Corporate Foundation, which you know really is focused on delivering meaningful change and positive outcomes in communities through partnerships and investments plays a key role in helping to advance this this vision and mission. So, you know, with with our history and this ethos I've described, we've recently reimagined our pursuit of a more equitable and sustainable future and, and we've called this evolution timeless by design. 
Um, with Timeless by Design, we're taking our philosophy of creating products that are meant to last and be passed down from generation to generation and, and really applying it to everything we do from how our products are made to how we value nature and, and impact the land and how we champion our people and our communities. Um, so for all these reasons, it's, you know, the US RCF, you know, was was really natural for us and it felt re feels really natural for us to be here today talking about sustainability and agriculture and cotton and about building and protecting soil health in the US. Um, our timeless by design approach is, is supported by three pillars, create with intent, protect the environment and champion better lives. And within these three pillars, we've committed to um, a set of, I think, ambitious sustainability goals, which, which include a few that are really relevant to the USRCF. So um, we've committed to reducing our emissions by 30% by 2030 across our scopes one, two, and three, which is a target approved by the science-based target initiative. Um, and we also aim to achieve net zero by 2040. We have a goal to achieve 100% sustainably sourced mat key materials, which definitely includes cotton for us by 2025. We also have a, a strong commitment to water stewardship, and we heard a bunch of the, um, the growers on the previous panel talk about the importance of water. And so our work in cotton and sustainable ag is really a really important part of that. And then most recently, we've made a commitment to um, invest in scaling regenerative practices by 2025, which is, of course, a big part of what we're talking about here today. Um, as a company, our portfolio is more than 80% cotton. So sustainability in cotton production and sustainable sourcing of cotton is really a critical pathway for achievement of the goals that I've outlined and fulfillment of our, our overall mission and vision. We really can't get to where we want to go without um, partnering with organizations like SHI and engaging with growers to, to shift practices in cotton production. Um, so we're working you know, as a company and, and our foundation to support the increased supply of sustainability grown cotton at scale so that we can build like a, a truly enduring supply chain, not just for our business, but one that also drives those positive outcomes for the ecosystems and communities that we're a part of and, and rely on. Um, so I think that brings me back to, you know, the aims of the US RCF, which really resonated deeply with our sustainability strategy and goals with the mission of our foundation. And I think very early on, we saw clearly the potential for amazing impact that was possible through the fund. And that's why, you know, last year, our, our the Ralph Lauren Corporate Foundation, through a $5 million grant, partnered with SHI to launch the USRCF. And, and what I'd like to highlight are a few of the key reasons why we're so motivated and excited to be a part of this. Um, the first is that the fund aims to drive both environmental and social outcomes. And I think, you know, we've covered this in, in some of the points so far, we, you know, we have the goal of eliminating 1 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent from the atmosphere by 2026, but also the piece of helping to ensure that farmers can generate long-term value for their operations. Again, kind of this notion of shared value and enduring supply chains and resilient communities. Um, as has been discussed, the fund is also advancing, you know, the science behind these environmental and social outcomes through the standardization, and really the simplification of soil health measurement and goal setting to, to make this something that's pragmatic and doable, um, and establishing the business case for why this these practices are worthwhile for, for farmers to um, make the transition towards. And then Byron, like you said, you know, the USRCF is really farmer facing and I think farmer focused, you know, we really appreciate the fact that it isn't prescriptive, but takes that localized contextualized approach to setting goals and applying practices in a way that works for the real diversity and variety of soils and climates and growers and farm businesses across the cotton growing seeds in the US. Um, and all of this, we think, is really critical for overcoming the barriers to, you know, adoption and getting regenerative practices to a scale that really tips it into the mainstream. You know, we think about things perhaps like organic agriculture and, and other practices that, you know, for all the sort of media and perceived demand have stayed somewhat niche, either, you know, used on a limited number of acres or only a handful of growers in a region are implementing the practices. And we felt like the USRCF presented and an opportunity to bring regenerative practices from being niche to really being the norm and, 
and, and, and creating a movement in that regard. So these are the reasons that we're really proud to have the Ralph Lauren Corporate Foundation as the founding supporter of the USRCF and are just so excited to enable its continued progress. Thank you so much, Sammy, um, for those comments. I love that from niche to norm that you have touched on. And I think that water is such a key driver, especially for adoption in cotton systems. Um, so just a reminder to all attendees, please enter any questions that you have and upvote those in the Q&A as we'll try to see if we can save time for one or a few of those at the end. Um, and so with that, Jeannie, VF has supported SHI's initiatives in cotton for a few years now. And so in building on what Sammy shared, can you tell us a bit about VF's goals and strategies and you know, why you see adoption as important um, to meeting uh, those goals and, and, and strategies and at, at your business? Sure. Thank you, Byron. And, you know, thanks to all of you for the opportunity to speak with you today. And I just wanted to mention, I loved hearing directly from the growers in the last panel about their specific and very practical experiences with regenerative soil health systems. So that was a terrific foundation to this conversation that we're having now. Um, so first of all, VF is the parent company of a number of outdoor activewear brands, including the North Face, Timberland, Vans, Dickies, Smartwool, and Jansport. And our commitment is deeply, our commitment to sustainability, I should say, is deeply tied to our purpose. Um, our purpose statement is that we power movements of sustainable and active lifestyles for the betterment of people and the planet. And because of the nature of our brands being out, active, wear, act, outdoor, we are deeply committed to environmental stewardship so our consumers can enjoy our products in a healthy outdoor environment protected for future generations. And as part of our sustainability journey, we've established a strategy and a reporting framework called Made for Change. And we've set a number of social and environmental goals. Most important to this conversation, in 2019, we set ambitious science-based targets. Um, those goals include a 55% reduction of scope one and two emissions and a 30% reduction of scope three emissions by 2030 from a 2017 baseline. And during this process of setting our targets and identifying our impacts, we, we really found that 70% of our impacts are a result of raw material extraction, processing, and production. So that gives us an area of focus and, and truly an area of opportunity. And so given that materials are our biggest opportunity, we have also um, set a commitment um, that we aim to originate 100% of our top nine materials from regenerative, responsibly sourced renewable, or recycled sources by 2030. And given that cotton is one of our top five materials, this is a top area of focus for us. Um, and specific to regen, we've invested in a number of regenerative agriculture pilots around the world across several key materials, including cotton, rubber, leather, wool, and sugar cane. And just a couple of these examples, uh, through a collaboration with Vans, the North Face in Timberland, we invested in the first regenerative rubber pilot in the world in Thailand. And then we continue to partner with New Zealand Merino to create the first regenerative wool platform in the world in collaboration with Smart Wool and Icebreaker. These projects help deepen the understanding of the benefits of regenerative ag to support farmers in the regenerative journey that we just heard about and to begin creating a supply of regenerative raw materials that we can use in our products. And now our brands are designing products with regenerative materials and we'll soon see these products on the marketplace in the coming seasons. So we just wanted to reiterate that our commitment to regenerative ag is an important lever to meeting our goals and our commitment to sourcing regenerative materials. So now I'll talk a bit about our important partnership with Soil Health Institute, which has been in place for several years. And since 2018, we have contributed grants from the VF Foundation to support a number of initiatives, including Healthy Soils for Regenerative Cotton. And more recently, we joined the US Regenerative Cotton Fund as a sustaining supporter. Um, this partnership, and initiative is complementary to our corporate efforts to advance regenerative practices by taking a farmer-centric approach to scale these practices and measure their impacts when growing cotton, which is again, a key material used by our brands and across the, the industry. Our support directly contributes to the Institute's efforts in Texas, where approximately 60% of, co of US cotton is grown. And Sammy described the fund well, but a few specific areas that we are excited about is that our support will help establish farmer to farmer mentoring networks, economic analysis, for, of, economic analysis of regenerative soil health systems, and increased access and opportunity for minority students in scientific leadership positions. So, so much great work here, and that we're so proud to be part of this effort. 
Um, so in closing, I'll echo a, a couple of comments made earlier that this is the decade of action and nature-based solutions are critical to the current and future health of our planet. And I'm incredibly honored to collaborate with so many of you in this important journey. So thanks, Byron. Thank you so much, Jeannie. Um, and Jeff, um, you know, I think that Jeannie captured, you know, the, the, the holistic nature of, um, you know, some of the benefits of soil health. Um, and I know that you've shared that many of Levi Strauss and Co's kind of North Star goals are very much aligned with those of VF and Ralph Lauren. And so um, can you speak to some of the strategies that you're employing? And, and I think to dive in a bit to what you've shared as to your perspective of what success looks like for you uh, for an initiative like the U.S. Regenerative Cotton Fund. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I, first of all, I mean, I, I want to really kind of congratulate Ralph Loren for starting this up and supporting it. It shows a tremendous amount of leadership. And, you know, I think that um, one of the key elements of success is the fact that Jeannie, Sammy, and I trust each other and we want to see scale. And I think that, you know, for any of these types of projects, um, in order for them to be successful and to move beyond pilots, you have to have trust and you have to have the same type of, um, you know, end goal. And so as you heard from Jeannie and Sammy already, um, the goals that we're all focusing on are kind of in the same zone. We're focusing on climate, we're focusing on biodiversity, we're focusing on water, we're focusing on uh, increasing the uh, percentage of raw materials that are uh, sourced from sustainable and certified sources. And so when you look at the, the foundation of our objectives, we're kind of all on the same page. If you look at our values and what we stand for as companies, we're all on the same page. And I think for me, that is one of the, the key elements of success. And the reason, you know, one of the main reasons why we joined it. If I was to, to look at what success looks like, um, I would say that it, it, it would really be serving the beneficiaries of this work, um, aside from scale, of course. Um, and, um, you know, who are the beneficiaries? I mean, it's pretty simple. We heard from the farmers, which I agree with you, Jeannie, that that was spectacular. I, I haven't heard that kind of level of detail previously, and it was super, super duper in interesting. And then the second one is the environment. We have to kind of, the, the environment is the beneficiary of this work too. Um, if we talk a little bit about the farmers, I think that um, Adam and Richard, uh, mentioned a few things that kind of resonated with me, which were that, you know, they're, they're doing this to kind of, um, you know, preserve their livelihoods and to continue and to manage um, scenarios into the future where uh, their next generations of their families can take on their farms or, or even new people can come into this type of field. And we need this farming to, uh, to, to uh, support what the brands need in terms of um, in terms of the raw material inputs. So I think uh, I think Sammy, you mentioned that um, your cotton penetration was about eight. I think eighty percent. Um, we're closer to ninety percent in our case. And so, um, if you look at you know the portfolio of things that we can do aside from organic or BCI or USCTP or recycled, we have to have other options that we can pull into the mix to, um, you know, to, to kind of fulfill that goal, but also to kind of raise the bar over time. Um, and then in terms of the environment, um, you know, I think everyone said it, um, you know, we have goals, we have corporate goals, we have to deliver these goals, we have to deliver them credibly, we have to demonstrate impact. And you know, one of the things that um, that I really appreciate from this project is that um, you know it's a project that started with impact in mind, and with KPIs and measurable kind of outcomes in mind. And I think a lot of times we look at these types of things with um, more kind of quantitative uh, volumes in mind, like uh, you know this many acres will be converted. Um, I like the fact that. This one is actually looking at the impact reductions and allowing us as, as you know, corporate leaders to be able to quantify the reductions as a result of, 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 of the work. And so, yeah, I mean, I think for me, you know, we, we want to 
we, we like to do pilots, but we need to start moving to scale. And um, pilots should not be a one and done type of exercise. I think that's why we've set this up for a number of years. And, um, you know, we, we, we trust each other and the collaboration in this particular space is so important to drive the scale. So thanks Jeannie and Sammy for, uh, for working together with us. Uh, we're looking very forward to working together with you and SHI. Thank you so much, Jeff. I think that that theme that we have heard um, reiterated throughout the US Regenerative Cotton Fund is one of convergence, and it does take convergence and collaboration and cooperation to scale. Um, and so, and that requires trust. And so that convergence and having that leadership and support from those brands um, is really key to delivering on that. Um, one of the questions I think is interesting here that the audience members have that, um, any one of you I'm sure can speak to is about, you know, what, what motivates um, your respective organizations, your respective companies to set these sustainability goals? Is it um, demand from consumers? Is it uh, um, instructions from leadership? Is it demand from shareholders? Um, what, what motivates uh, the establishment of some of your sustainability goals? Jeannie or Sammy, please, yeah. Yeah, I'm ha happy to, to jump in, Byron. I mean, I think the thing I would say is, you know, at Ralph Lauren, at least, I think that the motivation really comes, you know, from the legacy of our company and, and that sort of mission and value statement about, you know, timelessness and, and things that endure and are meant to be passed down from generation to generation that has been part of the founding, you know, principles and value set of, of Ralph Lauren, both the person and, and the brand. And so if you think about timelessness, it really is the same thing as sustainability. You can't have things that really last without doing business in a way that makes all the things that you rely on, whether it's ecosystems or natural resources, and really actually people and communities that enable all those things to be resilient and to be lasting and to be able to, you know, endure and, and, and be doing things in a way that um, work for everybody. And so I think we really have that internal motivation when we think about, you know, the specific types of goals and the commitments that we make, we definitely engage with key internal external stakeholders and think about, you know, what are the stakeholders that we are partnering with really looking for from us in terms of the specifics, but in terms of sustainability overall, it's really, you know, part of, of who we are as, as a company. Um, even before sustainability became sort of a, a buzz thing. Thanks, Sammy. Yeah, and Jeff, would you like to speak to that as well? Yeah, I mean, just maybe, I mean, that's, you sound like you you work at Levi's. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's kind of the same thing for us. We're, you know, 168-year-old company and founded on kind of quality and durability and timelessness. And so it's, it's it, you can see, you can see the theme here that, you know, we're kind of, we all kind of have the same kind of heritage and values and, and thinking about this. The only thing I would add is that, um, you know, all of us have done, you know, very detailed um, kind of science-based um, evaluations of what, where the key impact areas are in our companies. I think Jeannie mentioned it um, that, you know, they looked at their uh, carbon footprint and they determined that, you know, materials are the key area. And that's the same thing with all of us. I think we all recognize that agricultural inputs and processing and those types of things are, are where we can really move the needle. And so, you know, when companies decide to go down this path and create these strong programs like the three of us have, um, they also invest in, you know, developing the data to make the right decisions. And, and, and when do you sequence those decisions within your kind of temporal scope of your strategy? And so I, I think that's another thing to mention that it's not by accident that we do these things. And it's not, you know, it's not a PR play. It's more of, you know, these are the areas where we see the biggest impact. And I think that with this particular project, because it's so holistic, it ticks the boxes across a variety of our goals. And, and you know, there's not many um, types of approaches that do that for us. So this is kind of a win, win, win. And, and something that's, I think, quite easy to sell in when you can demonstrate that, 
you know, the, 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 the reductions or the improvements per unit, unit input, uh, you know, in unit monetary input are um, very high. So that's, I would add that too. Excellent, Jeff. And Jeannie, I know you might have some thoughts on this too. We have a few minutes, um, so please. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I might just say ditto. <laughs> that sounds like Sammy and Jeff are talking about VF with our, you know, commitment to durability and, and sustainability. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we have a deep commitment to sustainability because it's tied to our business purpose of the betterment of people on the planet. So that's really, truly what we what we stand for as a company. And everything that Sammy and, and Jeff described is so true in that how we um, have identified what our biggest impacts are and, and our to our commitment to protecting the environment. But I, I also want to mention that there is an increasing external pressure from some of our key stakeholders like investors and consumers. And the good thing about our companies is that we've already done the hard work to understand our impacts, to start to make an investments and partner with really important, valuable partnerships with the Soil Health Institute and others to, to establish a foundation of credibility, transparency with our consumers, with our investors. So as we enter a more regulatory um, era of, of, of reporting against our, our climate commitments, we're in a, a good place to do so. So um, I, I don't think we can ignore the, the external stakeholder pressure, but that's also um, you know, kind of an aside to what we're already committed to doing as, as companies and brands.